Uh, hello, uh, my name is Kelly and I play in a band called Block Party and you are watching Mosh Am. It's always hard when people ask you that question because they all feel good when you're doing them, you know. Um, but the first gig that comes to mind is probably the last time we played for them in the grass. That's probably one of my favourite. I think every time we've played there it's been really fun for us. Um, but the last time was really fun. So. We've always really felt a lot of energy from the crowds. Um, and this time it's just seen no different. And we've been away for you know, we've been away for like four years or something. So you know, we weren't really sure what to expect, but it was a really loving response and that's probably my favourite gig that I can think of at the moment. There was a time that we played in Nottingham and there were people just like running, there were people jumping onto the stage and just jumping, you know, jumping off into the crowd like throughout the whole gig, you know, even you know, even whilst we were playing kind of slow songs and everyone was just like super young and you know, super up for a good time. You know, I think the first tour we did, I remember it was quite like that. Matt is the biggest party animal in the band. He'll be the one that you'll always find uh, at the after show or at the hotel bar, uh, chatting to some young things. Yeah, he's the biggest party monster. There was a, a night when we played in Atlanta, and I think it was at the end of our end of touring for the first. I think 2005, and we, we ended up partying with uh, another British band called Kasabian, um, and we ended up uh, on the back of some girl's pickup truck, and she drove us to some parties somewhere in in, in Atlanta, and she was giving us all these um, what they called like um, prescription pills um, that I thought were fine, but um, there's a there's a member of Block Party that I won't. Name who said after that night he's never slept the same afterwards. He really thought that he fucked himself up uh, by the concoction of what she gave him. But I, I was fine. I, I had a great time. Well, Matt suffered a collapsed lung. I guess that's probably the worst injury suffered the worst being on stage. It actually happened whilst he was on stage. He was. We were um, opening for this emo band. Uh, called Panic at the Disco in the States, and uh, we, it was like the second show, and he, he started to feel his tightness in his chest or whatever, but he carried on playing, he did the whole set, but we had, but we had to take him to hospital afterwards because something was wrong, and then we found out he suffered a collapsed lung, and that was probably the worst injury that we've, a member of the band's experienced whilst being on the road. Yeah. He's alright now, but he has, you know, has to look after himself. No, um, no throwing of javelins or um, or like uh, rugby balls because it, it, it's that kind of motion apparently is very bad for the uh, for the for, for your lungs. So uh, and uh, yeah, so you have to be very careful about that sort of thing. Sometimes in life you just have to listen to your body. <laughs> there was a time that we played this club in Sweden and um, uh, you know we, we'd play the gig and we'd come out onto the bus and, and the bus driver said, oh. These girls um, left this for you, um, and it was like a carrier bag, and we, and we didn't know what was in it. So we opened it up, and it was um, and it was a bag of used uh, underwear, basically, <laughs> being freshly kind of used. We think um, so that was kind of uh, that was kind of interesting. But then we thought, oh, great. But then we thought, but then like the girls came knocking on the door of the tour bus, and they, and they said they wanted to come and party with us. This sort of thing had never really happened to us before, so we weren't really sure how to deal with it. Um, so like, I, I hid in, in my bunk. We didn't open the door, but, but, but then they surrounded the bus. There was about eight girls, that's Swedish girls, and they surrounded the bus and they kept like rocking it. Uh, and we couldn't leave for ages because they were like rocking the bus. That was probably the craziest thing, that fan experience that we've had. Could we have to call the police? Because you know we can't drive if they're like rocking the bus. We don't really kill them because that's like a that's a lawsuit right there, isn't it? We've had couples having sex quite a lot, especially in Europe, especially in like the Netherlands. That seems to happen all the time. Um, but I think probably the weirdest thing has been um, I, I once saw my, um, my mum crowd surfing, um, and, it, and like it wasn't a show in London. It was like in Manchester, and it completely freaked me out. But it wasn't really my mum, it was just someone that looked like my mum. So, but I had to stop in everything. 
because uh, I was obviously on the stage. And that's probably the weirdest thing I thought I'd seen. A basketball court in the summer in, in, in Philadelphia, that was pretty strange. A skip, jail cell uh, in the Playboy Mansion, and that was a strange night. Yeah, I was DJing somewhere in the States and a bunch of these playmates came to, came to DJ and we partied with them. Nothing naughty happened, although um, I, I did wake up on top of the piano. I wasn't wearing any underwear. I had a shirt on and my shoes, but no, um, no trousers, no, my jeans were on the floor. It felt like nothing naughty had happened. Mm. Uh, but I don't know, I think I probably need to go to the toilet. But, but there was no, um, you know, there was no uh, waste fluid or anything around me. So I'd gone to the toilet, I just hadn't put them back on, I think. Yeah, we've, we've had that a few times. We've had that. We've had to put fire alarms going off. We had that in uh, North uh, London University when we played there. Uh, there was, yeah, there've been shows where the crowds have been like super, like wild, and they've been falling over the whole time. Um, but yeah, that, that has happened a few times. I mean, I, I don't, I don't generally have a problem with policemen. Uh, I remember there was a policeman. Um, I was walking back from a bar that I'd been to and then there was a policeman on the side of the road and he was um, he was like going through this bum's like trousers. We asked him what he was doing and he, and he said, oh, what does it look like I'm doing, wise ass? I think he thought I was like being, um, trying to be smart, but I wasn't. I was just wondering what was happening. But then I realised that oh, I shouldn't really be getting involved with policemen you know, in the States unless I have to, because I don't really want to get Reported, so. so I just left him to it. That's probably the only time I've really spoken to a policeman. I, I tend, to, tend to try and avoid them unless I have to.